Hey everyone, it's Andrew Warner, founder of Mixergy.com. All right, let me just say, absolutely, there is unfairness in all startup competitions. And how do I know? Well, I was recently a judge at Twist Up, one of the biggest, best uh, startup competitions in the country. And I can tell you that I'm aware now even more of the unfairness and the biases in there. Now, so what can you do as an entrepreneur? Well, you, you, I think you've got two choices. Number one, you can complain, wah, there's unfairness, it's bias, it's wrong. Or number two, you can understand what it is and make it work for you. So I hope that if you're watching this, that you're the kind of ambitious person who wants to understand where the biases are, where the unfairness is, and just find a way to work around it. So let me show you three biases that work against some startups in uh, in startup competitions, and then I'll teach you how to get around them. And if you get around them, you can win these competitions, and I'm telling you, you can get traffic, you can get more attention for you, more partnerships, and potentially more investments. That's the benefit of doing all these uh, startup competitions. So the first thing is awareness. The first bias is awareness. So when I signed up to be a judge at Twist Up, uh, Mike, the founder, gave me a sheet of, of Excel spreadsheets full of information on all the different uh, startups that were competing. And it was my obligation as a judge to pick a handful of them that, will, that I believe should get to show off at Twist Up. I went through them and took my job really seriously because I love startups, I love Twist Up, I want to do the right thing here, so I went through every single website on the list that he sent me. But let me tell you something, the ones that I was aware of, the companies that I knew, I was much more likely to understand, to vote for, I hate to say it, it's true, to vote for. My number one choice, and I'm going to reveal it right now, I don't know if I'm allowed to, but I'll tell you, my number one choice was CauseCast, CauseCast.org. And why did I choose them to be a show off at Twist Up? Well, I was aware of their process throughout. I, I, I knew the founder. Uh, Levi, one of the people at the company, and I sat down, we played poker, and while we played poker, he said, you know, we're about to add video to our website, and here's how we're going to add video to our website. And all those little touches that, the, that, they, uh, that they had with me let me become more aware of their site, let me know more of what I should be looking for. Hell, as you can see, I'm not an expert at video. Sometimes you see there's shadow on this side of me, there's light on that side of me because there's, there's a window over here. All that's to say that I don't pay attention to the, the beauty and, and the artistry of video. But because Levi, before they added video to CauseCast, pointed it out to me, I made sure that when they did launch with a video to pay attention to it. Now this isn't all about CauseCast. This is just to tell you that awareness is important. So what do you do about it? Well, get to know the judges at all competitions. Get to know all the influencers in your community and make sure that they see your website. If you're out at a party, instead of hanging around, enjoying the drinks and having idle conversation, look around to see who are the influencers. Who are more likely, who's more likely to become a judge than others? And go over to them and take out your iPhone and show them how your website works. Remember, if you watched the, the video that I did with Jason Calacanis, you know to show, not tell show it to them. A lot of startups keep showing me their website over and over. Why? Because they know that I'm, I'm, I'm in this community a lot. And they don't just show it to me, they show it to other potential judges. By the way, if you think that you can't tell who the judges are, you're absolutely wrong. It's always the usual suspects. Brian Solis, constantly a judge at these events. Sarah Lacey, Lacey should not have been a surprise to anybody that she was a judge. So their usual suspects when it comes to judging, you should get to know them. And believe it or not, they love this stuff. So at a party, they would much rather Rather talk to you about your website and get a preview of it than have idle conversation. Okay, that's the first uh, the first bias awareness. People are more likely to vote for you if they're aware of you, if they know you, if they have familiarity with your website, and it's your obligation to get to know the people, uh, the, to get to know the influencers, to get to know the judges, and make them more aware of your product. Number two, simplicity. All right, judges are much more likely to vote for your product if it's a simple, easy to understand product. Does that mean that a complicated company can't succeed at these competitions? No. It means that if you have a complicated product, you've got to find a way to make it simple. Let me give you another example. RoboDynamics. They've got a, a product that I've never heard of before. It, sends, it allows you to send robots into other offices and have telepresence through those robots. Sounds complicated? Absolutely. But you know what they did to make it easier, to make it simple? They had a video on their website. You'd be amazed. As a judge, I spent time going through every single one of these websites, and the ones that had video were the ones that I understood faster and was more likely to understand completely. Yammer did a great job of that. Um, other websites did it too. I don't want to start singling uh, sites out. So absolutely, you've got to find ways to keep it simple. Finally, self-interest. Ooh, Let me tell you why I'm bringing this up. The winner of the People's Choice Award at Twist Up was a company called Totspot. 
Now, people are complaining, and I, I hate to see entrepreneurs complain. The world is stacked against you as an entrepreneur. Get used to it and learn to deal with it. If you're complaining, then it shows that you don't understand the way the game works. So Totspot had this thing where they offered people tequila out of little sippy cups at Twist Up. And you know what that did? That brought more people over to their table. And guess what? When people are, when guests are at one of these parties, at these events, what do you think they're more likely to want to do? Do you think they're more likely to walk, want to walk around and learn about websites? Nah, they could do that at home, right? Or do you think they're more likely to, and I'm giving you my answer here, obviously, or do you think they're more likely to want to have a good time? And Totspot, instead of focusing on their website and showing you the code behind the scenes and all that, and all that stuff that would be interesting in any other context, but would not be as interesting in a party or at an event like this, instead of doing all that, they gave out shots of tequila. They had a fun little time going on around their table. I think they had In-N-Out burgers. Everybody loves In-N-Out burgers. They brought it in. I hate that stuff. It's true. But you know what? It's not about me. It's not about you and your interests. It's about the guests who come to these events and their interests. So if you want to win a People's Choice Award at these events, you've got to you've got to understand what their interests are and cater to them and even if that means that their interests aren't to go through your website in absolute depth okay you know what those are the three let me give you one last one actually that I that I just realized right now because there's another bit of complaining that I see going on around twist up why did Mebo get in Mebo's not a startup why did Yammer get in Yammer's not a startup well let me tell you something I don't care I believe that they are startups by the way they are, they are not old enough to be considered mature companies by any stretch. But let me tell you something else. You got to apply. You cannot possibly complain about Mebo or Yammer or this or that being in the competition if you haven't really applied. And I've got to tell you, there's so many great companies here within walking distance or a short drive from where Twist Up, the, the event was held, that did not apply. Do you understand it only costs 75 bucks to, to apply to this specific conference and other, other startup competitions, it costs nothing to apply for. You've got to apply to get in. And why do you want to apply to get in? Well, I'll tell you something. The founder of Twist Up and the founders of all these events, really, they work like mad to promote the people who are, who are showing off at their events, to promote the competitors, to promote the successful companies. That means that they email people like me and they say, would you please write a blog post? Would you please tweet about this, uh, this company that's going to be showing off at our competition? That's excellent publicity for you. Let me tell you something else. Uh, last time that, that there was a twist up, I happened to be that day with Robert Scoble, um, managing director. I don't know what his title is at Fast Company, but he's a guy who's obviously shooting video of lots of people. You've probably seen it already. Of lots of internet companies. Great for getting publicity. The founders of twist up and the PR people at Twist Up knew that I was getting together with him. They were going to send cars and Mini Coopers and this and that just to bring this guy over. Why to bring him over? Well, yes, to see the to see their conference because they want to show off with what they're doing and they want to get attention for it. But number two, to show off the companies that are showing off that are competing at Twist Up. And every every single organizer of these startup competitions is doing the exact same thing. They are all going out of their way to promote the people. Who are who are competing to promote this to promote the startups because that's a way they get promotion for themselves so that's why you've got to absolutely apply and yes there's a bias it's unfair you will not win if you don't apply and I hope that you do apply now do you are there some companies that this is absolutely makes no sense for like for example a leads gen, a leads gen business a, you you don't need to be in a competition like this and maybe you've got other other work to do but I've got to tell you there's a minority of startups that can't benefit from these kinds of competitions. There's just too much attention here. There's too much publicity here for you to pass up. And I hope that you number one apply, and number two you start to become aware of more of the uh, more of the biases out there, and start using them to your advantage instead of crying on other people's blogs in the comments. You've got to fight as an entrepreneur. The deck is stacked against you, and that means that you have to understand how it's all played. Instead of complaining about it, you got to show that you understand that it's all stacked against you. Instead of complaining about it, you've got to find ways around it, find ways to win. All right. Long video, but I think it's very, very, very important if you've got an interesting startup to, to watch this thing. Watch this over and over, and uh, I'll see you at one of these events.